Hey guys, Lincoln Wright here. Today I want to share with you my top three building hacks, modifications and tips for putting together the Polar Bear Kit from the Machining Krieger property. Now, who am I to help you with this? Well, I've made 20 of these and uh, some of them are used for the studio models and I wrote some of the backstories for the different versions. Um, hopefully they'll give you enough tips to use in making your own version of it and you can share it with us in the group build. Okay, let's go. Okay, first things first with the AFS kit, you'll probably see all of the major components are in halves. So get something like this. This is a Tamiya plastic file. Uh, the bad thing is there's going to be a seam line running through each of the major parts. The good thing is it's pretty easy to clean up. In fact, even just by using extra thin glue, I can get it looking like this. What I do here, I call this cross filing. <laughs> I don't know if that's even the right name for it. But uh, after I've clipped off the parts, uh, I use a pretty sharp, good uh, nipper to, uh, to, to make it a little bit cleaner and uh, save myself a little bit of work. Uh, I'll show it here. I, uh, I run this across the edges there that will be mated up together. Uh, it just saves it. I mean, if there's a little bit of a bump there, it makes us a, a, uh, a line, a, uh, an opening that will go all the way through. So if you run it across both parts like this, uh, it just makes cleanup so much easier and quicker. So from now on, when you hear me mention cross-filing a part, that's what I'm meaning in my head. I'll dry fit the parts into here. I, uh, the, uh, these, these joints are nice and soft, so they give it a, uh, a semblance, some idea of articulation. Now you can see here I'm squeezing them together. Don't click it together like a Bandai kit. Yes, it's technically snap fit, but also kind of no. And I'll show you a really cool little hack here that will make your cleanup time so much faster. Now you can see I'm carefully, carefully squeezing that. I try to leave about a millimeter or slightly less gap in between there. If you accidentally squeeze them too close together, you can see here I'm running my thumbnail through there. It's probably not the best way to do it. I've also got some very thin uh, tools that I'll slide in. And uh, come on, come on, Stinky. Stay, keep up with the show, man. There we go. And I'll slide this stuff in to just pop it back open. Uh, be careful not to damage your plastic too much, but there you go. And that leaves just the right amount. Second step to this technique is to use extra thin cement. All of the brands work. I've done this with Tamiya and with, uh, with Gunze here. Now you can see I gave it a little bit of a squeeze. Try to get it as close together as possible, but still leave a slight gap. Simply drop in a full brush worth of, uh, of extra thin cement and, uh, and let the, uh, I believe it's capillary action there, uh, move it in between the, uh, the open areas there. Now be careful where the glue spreads out that you don't fingerprint your plastic. Now I leave it for a little bit, I look at it, I admire my beautiful handiwork, I have a little bit of a cheeky sniff, and uh, I mean smell, I smell, it. and then boom, I drop in another full one. and. Uh, I found I need two. One of them doesn't seem enough and leaving a little bit of time allows the previous drop of glue to, uh, to melt the plastic more. And then gently squeeze them together. Be careful not to squirt any on yourself. Squeeze that together. When I was doing this, I really was laughing to myself and saying, squeeze it together. And I do say that every single time and it gets funnier, I swear. Next, clips because you want these. I'm going to put them on and that keeps the squeeze going for me. Gratuitous close up. Now you know it's right when you get about, about that much. About that much plastic coming through is just enough. If it's not enough, sometimes it can shrink back a little bit, but that is just right. Here we go. Pop off the clamp and boom, that's what you get. And it looks awesome. Here's another run through on uh, one of the upper arm parts just to give you another look at the technique. Now this is one of my favorite go to seam fixing techniques for parts that are basically symmetrical. When the seam is right up the middle, up the guts, uh, this technique will always work pretty well. What I especially like about it is that it requires a minimum of products. It's, got, it's stuff that you've already got ready to go on your bench top. So again, I get the parts ready. Uh, squeeze them down as closely as I can. Um, you can see I've gone a bit rougher here, but uh, that's okay. As long as you have it within about a millimeter or so, just so that the glue can go pretty evenly uh, between the top and bottom of where you're dropping it in there. I uh, give it about a five second countdown. If you could count us in, please, Stinky. Go for it, Link. Yes, we go. Four, three, uh, three, two, 
one. And there we go. Now, can you believe I pre-placed that joke like yesterday? That's that's craft, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, that's that's the kind of uh, attention to detail that I put into my work. <laughs> I uh, as I'm putting that glue in, letting it set. One thing I'm going to mention. Okay, I get to say squeeze again, don't I? Squeeze. There it is. And uh, it didn't work quite well there, so it needs another squeeze. There we go. Come on, put your back into it, guy. Come on. All that time lifting weights and stuff. How does it help you? You can't even manhandle a little plastic kit. Squeeze. So I'll do that. Simply sandpaper or file it off at the end. It's too easy. Uh, let it let it cure for a couple of hours. Sandpaper it off. Done. Too easy. Golden. You will love doing this, and you'll giggle too. And you must say squeeze multiple times just to make it more fun. Now there is one part of the uh, the AFS suits that I'd like you to be a little bit more careful with. It's the lower forearms. The forearms for both the uh, the, the one that has the manipulator, the hand, that's this side, and then the other one that also has the uh, the laser side. Uh, the way they're put together, just be careful with uh, with putting too much glue in because there's a lot of details and it's easy for the uh, the extra thin cement to zip around the, the rings on the front there and you'll end up uh, fingerprinting the plastic. Yes, I've done that and that's why I'm giving you a, giving you a heads up about it. Uh, so I just did the one coat here and I'll be a little bit careful. If there's anything left over here, I'll come back and uh, retouch that with, uh, with probably something like Tamiya Basic Putty. But that's just a, an Uncle Link heads up. I've, uh, I've botched this kit. I've made a bit of a mistake a couple of times in that area. And I wanted to give you that fair warning. But there you go. You can see this one came together pretty well. Looks good. Clamp it, guy. <laughs> Clamps, the real fun of modeling. Okay, easy wave joint covers. Now, if there's one part of the AFS kit that I get asked about more than any other, it's how to clean up these joint covers. Now, the easiest way to do it is to do nothing. I'm serious. Many times, some of the demo kits that we do, if they didn't need to have, you know, really a, a lot of close-ups on all of the detail, you could just leave them because they're in a shadowed part of the kit. Now, that's a prop way of thinking about it. I know we're, we're making... We're thinking more in a scale model uh, perspective here, so we'd like to have some of them cleaned up. And uh, I appreciate that, I like to clean them up too. I show a couple of tools here. One of the main ways I do it is to use a, a round file. And uh, I rough it up on, enough on the edge to cut it all back, and then really, I run it quickly under a flame. Now be super careful, you can see, uh, because it's roughed up and it's thin, it doesn't need the fire on it. Uh, it's not even a full second. I'd say I'm about a quarter of a second time on target with, uh, with heating that up. If it catches on fire, uh, you've gone way too far. Maybe have some water handy. I've done this technique a bunch of times and I'm pretty confident with it. Now, whatever you do, the fumes off this are nasty. Don't breathe them in. Make sure you've got really good ventilation when you're doing this. Now, please be super careful, guys. Don't burn yourself doing this. Make sure if you run the flame under it, give it a good few seconds before you touch the parts again. They're going to be very hot and melting plastic is super dangerous. I'm, I'm very hesitant to put this out into YouTube. If you're a young person, make sure mum and dad are around. Make sure you've got a supervisor, someone to help you if you're going to be using flame. It's super dangerous. But it's the fastest, easiest way I know to get a reasonable finish with them, and we do this in the studio all the time. Now, another tool I'll use is the uh, the handy X-Acto blade. Uh, using a sharp knife, I run it backwards and forwards against the joint. Um, it gives it a damaged look rather than a clean look. Making these super clean is next to impossible. I have have seen I've seen friends do it with uh, with a uh, is it called a router 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 they call it in Japan. Uh, but that can have issues too with the heating up. But a quick run under the flame there, it melts part of it back, and uh, so it helps to give it a, uh, a damaged look. And, and sometimes I've painted in slight details to make it look like it's ripped, uh, if that works for you. But otherwise, just leave it in the background. This is probably the easiest way to get it somewhat smoothed down. Between you and me and the interwebs, basically these parts are really horrible. It's really, it's impossible to make them look really good. The most success I've had if I needed to have perfect looking joints is actually to re-sculpt them with putty, either replacing these or over the top. And we can cover that together in a future video. And it's a pretty cool technique too. It gives a lot of weight to the suit. Next, modding the joints. 
Now this is a very subtle modification of the kit. It's pretty simple to do. Most of the, uh, the demo kits have had this done. Uh, once we figured it out, we started doing it to all of them and we just couldn't go back. One of the challenges is uh, the, the kits are just a little bit uh, too long in the joints, to, to, to put it bluntly. So see how there's, an, there's a couple of millimeters there between the ball and the, uh, the foot plate bed part there. And uh, what we did was experimented with chopping it down and uh, getting it to, to seat better because because what will happen is it's more noticeable in the elbows you'll notice if you bend the elbows to full articulation you'll end up with a little bit of an air gap sometimes the, uh, the, the, the poly parts will pop out and it looks really not cool uh, same with the ankles if you uh, push it through too much of a range of motion you can get a little bit of a gap and uh, it just looks terrible so how to fix it's really easy so using your older, crappier nippers, cut it off. It's pretty simple. What I did was a couple of steps process here just so it doesn't go flying off because the last thing you want to do is lose the little ball joint to the, uh, to the carpet monster. So I, uh, I cut it off first so that I can catch both parts. Then I trim back the part off the footbed. And uh, I've done it in the past where I made this thing a ball but it does make the next step a little bit more difficult. So I've now left it so that I, uh, I can leave a little bit of a flat part so that when I push them together with the glue, it just seats a little bit better. Um, but making it into a ball, if that happens to happen to you, it's, it's not, not an issue at all. Just makes the next step a little bit wobbly. Using my scribing tool, I point a little dot, a little starter hole, uh, right into the middle of that part I left off. That's another reason to leave a little bit, uh, a little bit of overhang, a little bit of the plastic from the previous step left, because it just makes that easier to push into. Now be really careful, don't push that in too hard. I have stabbed myself whilst working on this step in the past. Now you can see there, even with this, it's just a little bit wobbly. It's hard to hold for the camera. Just take it in really easy. Try to be careful, test it that you're going in perpendicular, that you're going straight down. I have made some in the past. Uh, the best thing about making 20 of these is I've probably made all of the mistakes that anybody will ever make. I've put them in at a weird angle and then had to bend it over afterwards. It's still recoverable, but you know, you just don't want to have to do it. So going in there, nice and easy. Same again on the footbed part. Now I've put this down onto my uh, bench. It just makes it easier to have something to push against. So give it a bit of a spin, get the starter hole ready. One millimeter uh, working here. It's just a nice, easy, easy one to go with. Now this hole, it doesn't matter if it goes all the way through. With the ball, it's better if it doesn't go through. So it gives the, uh, it gives the, the, the brass rod that we're gonna put through it a place to stop. This one, on the other hand, you can put it all the way through. That way, if we accidentally cut the brass rod, rod a little bit too long, uh, the excess can just go down there. It's only going to be a matter of millimeters. If you can do it exactly, that's wonderful. But in this case, uh, I like it just for it's a speed thing. Here's a really indispensable part of my toolkit, one millimeter brass rods. Uh, I'm really lucky. I bought these in Tokyo and I bought like, you know, loads of them. And uh, it's surprisingly how many you use. Now, really easy. The one millimeter one fits in the one millimeter hole. Oh, <laughs> it's science, right? Now, super easy. I felt it wasn't quite deep enough here. You need it to be maybe two, three millimeters in to, just to give it enough for the CA glue, the super glue. You need it to have enough surface area on the rod for it to catch. Uh, it's hard to do it in your fingers up for the, for the screen. So I put it down here. So I've got just a little bit to push against there. As a general rule of thumb, you can kind of feel your pin vise, the drill bit, it will start biting into the plastic. I mean, that kind of tells you it's deep enough for it to, to, to work, to activate. Uh, it's in there deep enough. Now, go grab some glue. I've got two glues that I like. This one I'm starting to like more and more. The longer I have it, the more I like it. And the reason for that is my previous favorite, the longer I had it, the less I liked it because it kept drying up in the tube. So I used to be a super fan of the Wave one. Wave super thin CA glue. It's really, really nice. The trouble is it dries so quickly that, that I didn't find it was, you know, I'd buy it, use it a handful of times, even making loads of models, it'd dry up and then, you know, you'd have a nice big, you know, rock of plastic sort of thing on your bench. This one, um, now this is a rebadge. It's from a, gosh, it's like something 21. It's not going to be helpful, is it? Anyway, just get it from ammo and uh, it 
doesn't dry uh, through exposure to air like normal CA glue. From, from what I understand it, it dries from, uh, from having some pressure applied to it. I love it. Now these ones from Wave, however, are really kick ass. Uh, they're, they're like, like miniature bolt cutters. And uh, for cutting, I, I've used different kinds of uh, snips and different things to cut the brass rod in the past. Uh, these are uh, by far my favorite ones so far. Uh, I'll see if I can get a, a line on them so that uh, we can get them. Now you, you saw what I did, I just kind of measure it up, get it in there. Once I know what to do, uh, a few drops of glue on there. And this is why the hole goes all the way through the bottom of the footbed, because it doesn't need to be exact. I just push it in, seat it. I should push it down on my bench top just to make it sure it goes all the way through. If I can't do it through finger pressure like this. There it is right on cue, so give it a good push against there. Be careful not to stab your, your fingers with the thing. Now I really push it down there and that's it. It's solid. It's done. Um, I give this a bit of a wipe with the tissue because, you know, I'm, I'm scared of losing these bottles of super glue. But so far, I've had this one bottle and it's lasted me uh, like about a year now. It's great stuff. Okay, quick close up. There you can see stock part on the left and my modified part on the right. I wish I had two kits to show you how it looks once they're put together, but uh, this should do it. And uh, that's how you want the modified one to look. Next, the elbow joints. Now the elbow joints are very similar. They're just a smaller version of it. They've got the same little ball socket uh, attachment on them. However, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when you can be loose and when you need to be a bit more accurate, a little bit more care is necessary with the elbows because there's less tolerance for the way the, uh, the socket goes together. You wanna make sure as possible, uh, it's seated center or just slightly off. If um, if it's the hand, the one with the manipulator side, the um, inner side, the inner part of the elbow, the bendy bit, is uh, slightly thinner than the back. Uh, if you make the back too tight and you push it in there, when you close the joint, uh, it'll split the seams apart. And yes, uh, I've made that mistake as well. So, uh, I mean, it really is. I really feel this is one of my best value videos for a long time. I've made all of these mistakes and if I can help shortcut your uh, progress on these and you don't make a couple of these mistakes or you remind you of these mistakes not to do it, uh, it's mission accomplished, isn't it? Uh, this one, similar again, I use my older nippers to, uh, to cut the joint down. These ones, you don't need to be as aggressive. With the feet, I go fully flat. I cut pretty much all of the uh, extra part off the ball joint. With these ones, I've experimented with various amounts. So long as you go for half or less, uh, it'll work really well. If you cut it all the way down, they do get a little bit short. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It does look better than it fully long, but um, err on the side of just leaving, say, one or two millimeters of, uh, of extra plastic there on the ball joint, and it will look cool. Now, take it easy with your fingers here. These are pretty fiddly. Uh, I managed to get a decent grip there, and I'm going very carefully. I'm not putting too much pressure. That's why even to just go a couple of millimeters in there, I'm spinning it more than I'm pushing down. But do take care of your fingers, guys. I mean, you hurt your fingers and you're out of action from modeling for quite a while. So um, go in here about two to three millimeters. It should be plenty. Same here again on the, uh, the socket part of it. Uh, this one's quite fiddly. Uh, I use the same methodology, the same process there. I, I put in a, uh, a little dot with the uh, describing tool. And here it's more important to go down, make sure it's pretty perpendicular and uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room, so be careful not to scoot out the side of the plastic because it's hard to fix. I mean, you can do it, but it's hard. You wanna keep it nice and neat. So this one definitely compared to the feet, I took a little bit more care and you can see I've got a nice grip on it and uh, keeping everything neat and tidy pays dividends. It's more of the, uh, you know, less haste, less waste kind of thing uh, on this one. Uh, you can go down and say about halfway through on this one. It doesn't need to be too deep. There's a little bit less pressure on the elbow joints. Um, just enough for that one millimeter brass rod to grab. There you go. Once the hole is done, dead center. I was pretty proud of that. I, uh, I usually dry fit these. If I'm in a super hurry, I don't. But I just, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing I, uh, I want to do it once. I don't want to mess it about too long. So. I found these wave, uh, these little mini bolt cutters that were quite cool too because I could slide it down right onto the part and uh, they gave me just almost exactly the right amount. You can see I've got maybe say two, three millimeters over there. And doing a quick dry fit test, I did find that uh, I didn't have the, uh, the hole uh, drilled deep enough. 
into the ball part of it. So uh, it's a very simple matter then of uh, using the, the pin vise to, uh, to re-drill just a couple more millimeters out. Um, <laughs> and the good thing was the ball grabbed it so I was able to then work on the easier to grab part. I mean that was a little bit of an easy win there. Uh, it does, doesn't matter which end it goes into. Uh, also with the glue, I found I only need to glue one end and the joint ends up strong enough because any of the glue that pushes out through pushing them together uh, seals the joint and uh, I don't have to you know, do both ends of the brass rod, it's nice and easy. There we go, good stuff, done. I oh, spotted a quick tip, I use a tissue there to quickly push them together, it just stops me from getting super glue on my fingers, but you have to pull it off straight away. Um, if worst happens and you do get tissue paper stuck to it, it's very easy to scrape off. It's easier than getting it off your fingers. Okay, thank you very much for making that through with us. I hope that you enjoy it and it helps you when it comes time to make your own AFS. I needed to make this one a little bit shorter, so it's my top three, but I actually have a video top five mods for the AFS and that's available to our patron supporters. We cover a handful more hacks and tips that will help you to put this kit together and I also touch on some things that I've forgotten each time I've made one of these and I hope that will help too. We've also got a group build going on MAK Arid Environment theme and this kit would be perfect for that. Please do share yours with us. Okay, thank you for making it through with us and a special big thanks and shout out to our mates at Hobby Co Australia. Uh, they helped me with uh, some of the tools, the, uh, the glue and those awesome nippers that we showed you here. Check them out in person or online and support local. Extra special shout out to our uh, awesome Paint on Plastic co-production team, the patrons who make these videos possible. Please consider joining the team, patreon.com paint on plastic, and you can support us, get uh, access to extended cut videos, PDF downloads, and a bunch of other cool stuff, and an awesome community. Make a bunch of buddies. Thanks guys, cheers, see you in the next one, bye.